So let's pray and ask the Lord to go before us. Father, we thank you so much for your word. And Lord, we ask that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit, Lord, that you would give us ears to hear your spirit. Because, Lord, in these days and in these times, we need your wisdom to be able to make decisions, uh, to serve, to be involved, to follow you, um, to just be leaders, whether it's at home or whether it's at our job or whether it's just within people we know. We're, we're ultimately Christian leaders. And so, Lord, I just pray that you would equip us tonight um, for your glory, though. That's what it's for. It's not for our glory. But it's for your glory and, and you called us out of the world and you've set us apart and so lord we need your word to feed us that we can go forward to be victorious so bless your word tonight lord and as it goes out and lord that you would just be behind it by the power of your spirit in jesus name amen so second samuel chapter 20 it's kind of where we've been uh <laughs> And uh, what we've been covering is the pursuit and the rebellion of Sheba. And we have been covering a number of different, uh, different levels and the different things that have been involved in Sheba being here. And it's funny because, man, we went over things about Absalom, remember? But, man, how much more have we gotten just from watching Sheba's rebellion? It's funny. It's almost like David was right. You remember because David said he sees that Sheba's going to be more of a problem even than Absalom. So it's no wonder the Lord hasn't spending so much time here because there's so many dynamics involved with what Sheba was doing as a man of division, causing a separation of the kingdom, but poisonous. And David saw that poison. He was like, this dude's worse off than Absalom. We got to go get him. But I'm glad that throughout the time we've been reading of their pursuing Sheba, we've had a lot of interesting things take place, which last week we went over Joab's interaction with Amasa and how Joab is still consistently in our reading a type of the flesh. Joab is a type of the flesh so much so that we learn so much on what we're doing and not doing with our flesh. And so last week we saw that the men, when they watched Joab murder Amasa, by, mind you, as we talk, this has been on the road to chasing Sheba. So there's a lot of things happening, so we gotta really be focused. On the road to chasing after Sheba, Amasa is killed by Joab, lying, remember, wallowing in his blood, the Bible said. And the guys all stood back as they should have. And they were like, whoa, whoa, what, what happened here? But as we talked about last week, what should have happened was the guys should, should have said, Joab, that's enough. You're, you're done, dude. It's over. But Joab had a guy on his side that was tricky and good with the words and got everybody to just, you know, forget. And he pulled off Amasa's body off the ground, hid it in the field, covered it with a blanket, and then they moved onward chasing after Sheba. So the message we got last week was just being able to pursue after the objective even though you're not really dealing with the issue at hand. And the issue at hand for us in our reading is Joab. And ultimately, the objective has been Sheba. So now, tonight, we kind of resume back on track. Uh, but as we all know now, we're back on track, sure. We're going after Sheba still, absolutely. But we know there's still weirdness amongst the soldiers, amongst the people. Because Joab is just pursuing his own motivation. So we're learning that you can still go after the objective, that which is causing division. Sometimes that can be sin, sometimes that can be whatever it is, you know, to you. We're learning that we can still go on even though we haven't really dealt with sin the way we should. And that's what we got from last week. So now, this tonight, we're finally gonna come to a closure here. We're finally gonna get to a point where this Rebellion of Sheba, this guy that started the vision, and all these things that have happened within the in-between is going to, I believe, come to an end if we get that far in our reading. Uh, and so let's start at verse 14, because now that's where we're at. So now it says, and he went through, meaning who he, Joab, because Joab resumed with all his guys to chase after Sheba. He went through all the tribes of Israel unto Abel. 
and to Beth Micah and the Barites, and they were gathered together and went also after him. So, so Joab now in pursuit, now Joab has taken the lead because he wiped out Amasa and he basically shoved his brother Abishai out of the way, who was supposed to be in charge, if you guys remember. Um, so now Joab's in hot pursuit. He's going through all the tribes of Israel. And that's something interesting to note, that Joab is letting everybody know who's leading this posse at this point. He's going around as everybody knew Joab was in charge at one time as the captain. He's back in charge by his own gain. So we're hearing that now he's going through, everybody's recognizing, but he's still continuing in pursuit. And now verse 15 says, so, and they came and besieged him in Abel. Who's him? Sheba. Here we go. He got it. He besieged him at Abel and they cast up a bank against the city and it stood in the trench and all the people that were with Joab battered the wall to throw it down. So they caught him. That which has caused division for David's kingdom, that which has been a rebellious man, that which deceived the people into saying, let's just go and build our own tents. They finally caught him. That which causes division in our own minds, that which makes us unstable in all our ways, because the Bible says a double-minded double -minded man is unstable in all his ways, we finally get it. We finally come to a point where we capture what we can sometimes call our sin, or just that what is a distraction to us. And many of us have been there. We know what it's like to finally have our sin up against the wall. We know what it's like to finally have uh, whatever it is that you might have been struggling with, whatever it is that you might be lusting with, whatever it is that you might be going through, we've all been there, if, if not you're there now, where you've been in God's word, you've been in pursuit after it, you've been asking God to give you deliverance, you've been asking God to show you how you can deal with this sin and get it out of your life so you can be victorious. We've all come to a point where we've had it against the wall. Every single one of us have. Or maybe some of us are there right now. Or maybe some of us are in pursuit of something that's causing you to be divided within, and you're trying to get it so you can contain it. You see, that's the issue here. Sheba is that problem. And that's what I keep camping on because it's important that we find out what is our problem? What is it that's causing us to be divided? What is it that's causing us to be separated within? And have you caught it yet? First of all, have you caught it yet? Have, or how, in other words, have you even admitted it yet that you have a problem? Have you even admitted that you have identified your Sheba? that which is causing division to you in your life and in your walk with God. Have you admitted it yet? Have you found it? See, we have to identify it first. What is it to you? Insecurity? Pride? Anger? Doubt? Despair? Confusion? Uh, what is it? So many people these days are depressed. They don't recognize it. They don't know that that's causing division in their life. So eventually, guys, as we're in the calling that God has for us, as we're walking the walk, so to speak, we're going to find that we have finally come to a place where we've identified our problems. You've got to do that first, man. Before we go on in conversation, I hope to encourage every man in here to identify your problem. Because if there's something that's causing you to be split, as Sheba has been that problem for David, then you guys got to catch it. You guys got to catch it. And you got to get it trapped. But now, let's move on. It gets interesting here. Then cried a wise woman out of the city. I'm going to stop there for a second. You see, a lot of the times I think when we finally capture that problem in our lives, when we finally identify it and we finally take note of what it is that's causing us division and we finally say, you know, I got a hold of it, man. I got a hold of it. It's been my pride, bro. Or it's been the music I listen to. Or it's drugs, straight up. Or it's lust. I finally got it. I know what it is. It's I'm depressed. I'm wallowing in my own emotions. The question that I, I think we should ask ourselves when we come to this point is what are you doing to deal with it? And how are you going about 
to deal with it. If we were Joab, well, we would batter the wall. We would then eventually say, burn this city down right now because that dude is in there and he needs to die today. See, Joab's mindset, again, remember guys, Joab is a type of the flesh. The flesh wants to see the problem in our life. The flesh wants to identify it. And then the flesh wants to just whack at everything and just go full force at it until it's completely gone. Now, yes, I believe if there's sin in our lives, that's how we should deal with sin. We need to just cut it out. But let me throw an interesting thought there. Sometimes, guys, if we don't handle our Shivas wisely, we can end up doing more harm to ourselves and others around us. You see, what I think we're going to see happen tonight in our reading is God is going to give every one of us a tool that I think we can take and use for the rest of our lives as Christians. It is how are you dealing with those things that you see that are causing you to be split as a Christian? How do you deal with it? Do you just go at it angrily? Do you just surround it and start burning everything? I remember when my dad got saved way back then. And um, it was in the 80s. My mom had all these records, you know, Tina Turner and all the other stuff. And so I remember my dad was saved. And the first weekend that he was saved, I remember waking up Saturday morning. And we lived in a small apartment. And I remember just hearing records smashing on the ground. And I go, oh, what's up? You know, and he's got a screwdriver. And he's hacking through every record my mom had. Which right now, it would totally be worth money. I think it would be sweet if we had some of them records. But my dad was just going, I'm a Christian, rampage mode. Crack the records, throw every picture, anything that has to do with the world needs to be out of my house. Let me ask you this question. He's dealing with the Sheba, the sin, the world, but was my dad dealing with it wisely? I, let me take it to my own life, and I got rebuked by my wife the other night, as it usually happens, because I end up preaching at her and <laughs> all that stuff. And I'm talking to her, and I'm saying, you know, and I, you know, I, I judge my wife. Uh, I examine, you know, her life spiritually. That's what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> and as her husband, I'm called to love her as Christ loves the church. Um, but sometimes uh, my delivery can be a little, uh, you know, how should I say it? Uh, rough. <laughs> So I'm telling her, look, hon, you know, and, and I won't get into the details, but I'm telling her, look, hon, you just, you got to stop. You're sinning. <laughs> You're falling short of the glory of God. <laughs> You're bringing sin into the camp. <laughs> you know, all this stuff. And she looks over and she says, you know, Phil, have you ever thought maybe you should talk to me a little differently? And I'm like, nope. I'm just this way. It's how I am. I'm a black personality. It's how I do it. And she's like, you know, when you talk to me that way, it just makes me really not want to listen to anything you have to say. And I know you're doing it for good because, you know, you read the Bible all day long and all this stuff. She goes, but really, it just, it's, it's turning me away from what you have to say. So you really need to pray about your delivery. So me, because I'm prideful, I'm, I'm fighting my own case here, and I'm trying to still win her over. And then the Lord speaks to me and says, Phil, you need to, you need to handle this wisely. Sure, you have a godly purpose. You see that there's some things in here that's in your marriage that you need to work on. Sure, Phil, granted, I'll give you that. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> but you're telling her the wrong way. And you're not speaking to your wife in a loving way. And you're not dealing with the Sheba or the sin or, you know, whatever it is, the compromise or whatever it might be. You're not dealing with it wisely. Jesus said over in Matthew 10, verse 16, he says to his disciples, Behold, I'm sending you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. He's saying, look, I'm sending you out to Dramaville, man. You're gonna, you guys are going to take it from all sides. You're going to be hurt. You're going to be in despair. You're going to get slammed. You're going to get mocked. You're going to make fun of. But listen up. You need to be wise. You need to be wise as a serpent and you need to be gentle as doves. Be harmless in your guys' delivery. What I believe the Lord is speaking to us tonight, and we're going to get a little bit further into it, is when we do finally find ourselves capturing that Sheba, capturing that which is causing division, we need to stop and ask ourselves, 
How do I handle this, Lord? How am I supposed to deal with this? Do I go all Rambo mode? Because I will. I'm down with Rambo mode. I'm good with that. Do I just go extreme? You know, it's funny. For, as men, we're extreme. Seriously. You're, when you're depressed, you're extremely depressed. When you've got a cut, you're wounded, you want to go to emergency. You know, that's infamous. My dad and me, we, it runs in our book. I got a cold, I'm, I'm laying in the hospital. They're looking at me like, you could go, man. You're good. No, you don't even know. I'm, di I'm diagnosing myself and telling the doctor what's wrong with me. You know? We go extreme and everything that goes on. So sometimes when we see sin or when we see compromise or when we see something that's troubling or even something that may be causing division, kind of like when I was talking to my wife about some things that are going on with us, I was like, I wanted to go extreme mode. You need to change right now. Right now. It's it. It's over. As of today, not happening anymore. It's like, whoa. Is that me being wise as a servant and harmless as a dove? Absolutely not. That's me going Rambo mode to deal with my Shiva. So here's this woman here while Joab's ready to burn the city down. Because that's Joab. That's the flesh. That's what we want to do. Right now we'd be like, amen, Joab. <laughs> here's this, this, as the Bible says, wise woman. You see now, she comes out of the city. She says, here, here, say I pray you. She's like, whoa, 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 whoa. She's saying, hold on, here, somebody listen to me. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. Let me get there. I'm sorry, verse 20. It says, wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. You see, guys... Wisdom is there for everybody in this room to attain. The Bible says, if you lack wisdom, ask for it. He gives it in abundance. We cannot go in believing that we would be left to our own failure. Because wisdom crieth out. You're the Joab. You're pounding at the door. You're dealing with the issue. You're wanting to get things settled. But you got to hold on because wisdom's crying out from somewhere. The Lord's trying to get your attention. I love Hebrews chapter 1. And this is one of those scriptures that I think we all should. And we could spend a whole night on it. Somebody tell me where Hebrews is at. What book's it out here? Huh? Oh this is not. This is what happens when I don't. When I think I can just read my Bible. Is it after Philippians or what? What is it? Right before James? Is that after Philippians or what? Oh, here we go. Hebrews. <laughs> what? Is it? You know, it's after Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Uh, wisdom crying out. You see, listening for that voice. Watch this. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 says that God, who at sundry times in the diverse manners, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. Okay, in, the old, in other words, he spoke to all the people in the old school times by the prophets. But have in these last days, are we in the last days? Yes. Amen. In these last days, spoken unto us by his son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. You see, listen, we have that wisdom, that crying aloud in our lives. We have that voice that's in the streets shouting out to us, trying to reach to you when you want to deal with something, when you want to handle your sin, when you want to change your life, when you want to deal with a circumstance. We have that voice, and that voice is spoken to us by His Son. You see, and when we hear, and when we want to learn what His Son has spoken to us, we have to read the Word of God. John 14, 26 says, But the Comforter which is the Holy Ghost whom the Father will send in my name, he's going to teach you all things. And then not only teach you, watch this, and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Listen, when we come to a point of frustration or anger or depression or hurt or whatever it might be, there is a voice that's wanting to help you deal with your situation. And that voice is sometimes a still small voice. Is sometimes one that we don't always hear super loud and clear. And that voice is something by the Son of God that we have read at some point in His Word that His Holy Spirit is going to bring to our remembrance at that time. In other words, guys, we are without excuse. You see, we 
those of us in this room who read our word regularly are without excuse because you want to know why? Because when you are in that moment, like I was with my wife, getting all weirded out, I heard the Holy Spirit say, Phil, you need to love your wife as Christ loved the church. And you're not doing that right now. See, God was faithful to speak to me with that voice, with that wisdom that I constantly ask Every morning, I think we all should wake up and say, Lord, give me wisdom to deal with my day today. <laughs> I think that should be a prayer of every one of ours. And because God is faithful, even when we are not, when we're dealing with situations such as this, we can trust that God is going to stop you in your tracks. And you're going to hear the voice cry out aloud. So, but first, as you see, what she's saying to Job is, here, here say I. She's saying, does anybody hear me? And this is the sensitivity of the Holy Spirit. God says, do you hear me first? Because the first thing we have to do is be willing to want to listen to what God has to say. And this is where the man in all of us has to deny himself. She says unto Joab, come near hither that I may speak with thee. Finishing verse 16. Come close to me, man. I need to talk to you, Joab. He hears this voice crying aloud from over the, the wall. And when he was come near unto her, the woman said, Are thou Joab? She identified him. Are thou Joab? And he answered, I am he. Then she said unto him, Hear the words of thine handmaid. And he answered, I do hear. So one good thing about Joab is he's going to listen. Even though he's in Joab rampage mode, and he's in Joab I kill everything I see mode, the voice is crying out aloud. And it's calling unto him. And he's listening. See, what's happening here is this wise woman is bringing into some kind of subjection Joab, or in other words, the flesh. And this is what we can count on God's word to do, which is why it's so important for every single one of us to be in God's word continually and daily. Because God's word will bring your flesh into subjection. You can't bring your flesh into subjection. Absolutely not. You are your flesh. <laughs> you work against yourself, as a matter of fact. You can't do it on your own. You can't come to a place where you tell yourself, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Because then you open your eyes, I don't got it, you got it, I got it, I got it. I got it. You, will, you will lose that battle. It's the word of God that brings you into that point where you are submitting to his word. <laughs> so he say, I do hear. It's almost like you got a trance. I hear, I hear you. <laughs> Joab saying. Then she spake, saying, they were wont to speak in old times, back in the day, she's saying, they shall surely ask counsel at Abel. And so they ended the matter. So what she's saying is, listen, you're at, you're at my city, Abel, here. We are known to be a city that negotiates. This city is a city that is a, re we are reasonable people, Joab. We are a place that people used to think and used to come and say that, hey, whenever you go to Abel, they ended the matter. They dealt with situations there. So funny thing that this place would be identified like this. This city is known to be a place of resolve. And this wise words, these wise words are coming out of a place that is known to be a place that can bring resolve. We know that no things are by coincidence that Sheba would find himself in this place. Maybe Sheba knew. Hey, I'm going to Abel because over there they handle things, man. They'll be cool and peaceful with me. Verse 19, I am one of them that are peace, peaceable and faithful in Israel. She's saying, you, Joab, I, I, I'm nobody. I don't even, we don't even see your name. All we know is she's saying, look, I, I'm one of them that have that reputation here. Like I'm willing to just talk. What, what is it that you're doing on our doorstep? What is it that you're trying to burn our city down for? Why are you guys battering? What, what's going on here? We need to know. You see, because wisdom begins to pinpoint and figure out the problem. Discernment. It's heavenly discernment. Wisdom goes, okay, what's the problem? The flesh says, I don't care. I got to handle it. We got to deal with it. Wisdom says, what's going on? What's the problem? Let's talk about this. Let's identify it. Have we even allowed God to come into so far, so deep into our hearts to identify the problem? Going back to just knowing what that Sheba is. See, wisdom here, this woman here through her words is going to begin to start saying, what is it that you're here for? What is it that you need to find? How often do we hear the Lord saying, let's talk about this and I want to work with you and I want to, I want to show you what it is. At some point in this time, 
when we are sitting there at home or we're sitting there at our work and we're contemplating our relationship with the Lord and maybe we're contemplating on the drama in our lives or maybe we're contemplating on other things. At some point, God wants to talk with you and begin to show you the things very meticulously too. God doesn't leave you stranded. And she's saying, so I'm one of them. And she says, thou seekest to destroy a city and look at, and a mother in Israel. Why wilt thou swallow up the inheritance of the Lord? So you see, this city is an ancient city. It has its roots there in Israel. It has its roots among even the Lord. It's a funny thing how the flesh without thinking can just devour things in our lives that have roots with the Lord. It's funny and really sad, actually, how... If we allow for the flesh to consume us, all of those things that God has spent so much time in talking with you and walking with you and reminding you of, how often, how, maybe some of us can experience this. Some of us have been walking with the Lord for over 10 years. And you'll find yourself in a fit of rage and all of it will go, you won't even think anything. Because that's what the flesh desires to do. The enemy in, uses this type of flesh, this type of Joab, that's in rage mode. To make you instantly forget about all you know about your Savior. Some of us have been there. It's in those moments of lust. It's in those moments of temptation. It's in those moments of being discontent. It's in those moments of depression or anxiety. Those moments that we forget all of a sudden who our God is. The victory that we have in Jesus. The victory that we have and the freedom that we have in salvation can all of a sudden dissipate in a second by just being angry or confused or lust. Very powerful lust. You could be driven by it and all of a sudden you're not even thinking anything you know of the word of God. See, this, this city was a mother in Israel. It had roots there. And she, the wisdom's trying to say, listen, if you continue, Joab, to pound on this, if you continue to go about the way you're going, man, you're going to really do some damage here to a place that is solid and that has a reputation of peace. You see, guys, every single one of us in this room have this in us. We have it because we have Jesus. And every single one of us in this room have peace. We do. Look deep down inside. You'll find it. Look deep down inside your heart, you'll find victory. If you look deep enough into what God has put in your heart through his word, you'll find strength. And you'll find, you'll, you'll get happy. You'll be like, I can do it. Because, you know, you know what? I remember when I was walking with the Lord and, and, and I found happiness in him. And I overcame myself. And I was able to put aside the world and I was able to walk forward in, in Bible study and learning who God was to me. I didn't care about money. I didn't care about anything else. If we look deep enough, we'll see it. And wisdom and the word of God wants to reveal that to you on a daily basis. He wants to reveal to you the power that you have in Jesus. Not the power that you think you have in yourself. We have to gain control of the flesh. And as we see wisdom crying aloud is gaining control of Joab. It's beginning to subdue Joab a little bit. You see guys, as we deny ourselves daily, we find ourselves going, Lord, I get it. And that's when the choice comes in. So Joab, verse 20, answers and says, Whoa, far be it, far be it from me that I should swallow up or destroy. <laughs> See, Joab's making a choice. Now, I'm not about to call Joab a good man at all, okay? This dude is gnarly. Wouldn't want to meet him. Uh, but what I do want to take note of here is how wisdom is overcoming Joab and how strength can overcome the flesh, the strength of the Lord can overcome the flesh. See, guys, we're weak. But the Bible says when we are weak, he is made strong. So there's a strength that comes from God that can devour your flesh. <laughs> so as long as we allow it. The matter is not so, verse 21. He's, I ain't doing that here. What are you talking about, wisdom? 
But a man of Mount Ephraim, let me tell you why I'm here. Since, uh, you know, he's getting subdued, he's calming down a little bit. And now he's talking to this woman who's on the other side. He's saying, listen, the reason why I'm here is because Sheba, the son of Bichri, by name, hath lifted up his hand against the king, even against David. Deliver him only, and I will depart from the city. And the woman said unto Joab, behold, his head shall be thrown to thee over the wall. That's my kind of woman. <laughs> she, she wants to deal with the problem. She's cutting heads off. I don't even think he said deliver me his head. Did he say deliver the head? She just on her own said, I'll give you his head. <laughs> I'll keep the body. Hey. You see, what has happened here is the problem has been carefully identified. Sheba, now the purpose that Joab is there has been revealed through talking, through wisdom communicating. One of the biggest things we lack as men is communication skills, man. It's not good. Uh, I don't know. I mean, how good of communicators are we? I sit in so many counseling appointments oftentimes, and, and communication is always the issue. How do we talk with one another? How about brothers? How about brother to brother? Marriages. Everything. Even communication with our Lord. We struggle with that sometimes. Talking to God. Because I believe in prayer. While we spend time with the Lord and we begin to allow for his words to come into our mind and come into our heart, we begin to say, Lord, okay, and we find ourselves in a place of prayer. And when we find ourselves in a place of prayer at this point, we find ourselves now hearing the Lord show us what it is that we have to deal with and what it is that the problem is. And now, as I mentioned earlier, when we see sin and we see things in our lives, Remember I mentioned earlier that, hey, we want to go at it and cut it up and get it out of our lives, right? But you see, notice, the objective is the same. The result is the same. Literally, they're cutting his head off. They are chop, chopping him up, getting it out of there. They are getting the sin and dealing with it in the most morbid way. But the, it's happening now through wisdom. You see, so there's an intervention that takes place for the Christian today. The intervention that teaches us that we can deal with sin and we can deal with these things in our lives that we find ourselves being split over and we can deal with them gentle, harmless as doves, wise as serpents. We can deal with it and you know, and the result is usually the same. However, what was spared here is the roots of an ancient city. One that have a reputation of God, by God, a reputation known amongst the people to be peaceable. Now, guys, we don't have to shred our witness, you see. You get where I'm going with this? We don't have to shred the witness that we have. We don't have to ruin the word of God that's within us by dealing with sin. I don't have to be representing myself before my wife and, and ruining my marriage at the same time only to deal with sin. I can do it in a loving way. I can do it by way of wisdom. I can do it by God's word. And I can, I can accomplish the same objective, but sparing that which really matters and that which is really lasting. We don't have to get sloppy about swinging the sword around. And this is where as Christians, we find ourselves failing at times. We want to deal with things and we start getting the word of God and we start flinging it around everywhere. And like the disciple, we cut ears off. We don't have to do that. We need to stop. We need to listen to the word. We need to hear out his spirit. And then at the same time, he will still deliver us from the Sheba, from that which is causing division, from that which is a problem, but deliver it in his way. And then when it's delivered in his way, he gets the glory. Not you. You see, because if Joab would have just went over there and burned this whole place down, then Joab would have been, Joab, Joab, Joab. Yeah, but now, hey. Right now, we're, we're meeting a woman here who we'll never forget. There's women in the Bible that, are, that aren't mentioned much, and she's one of them. What about the woman who's, who spared her own city, but yet who was willing to cut the head off the man? So the woman went out, verse 22, unto all the people in her wisdom. You see, she continues to move forward in wisdom. And they cut the head off of Sheba. And they cast it out to Joab. Done deal. You see, it was resolved in a completely different way. It was resolved wisely. 
And he blew a trumpet, or a shofar, in other words. And they retired from the city, every man to his tent. And then Joab returned to Jerusalem unto the king. Now Joab was over all the host of Israel. Let's finish this. And Benaiah the son of Jehida was over the Cherethites and over the Pelethites. And Adoram was over the tribute, and Jehoshaphat, the son of Ahilud, was the recorder. And Sheba was scribe, and Zadok, and Abiathar were the priest. And Ira, also the Jarite, was a chief ruler about David. What happened now? David begins to set back in order his kingdom. You see, the fruit of dealing with the Sheba. You guys remember the whole story. Let's take the whole scripture in context. David knew that Sheba was going to be a divider. Sheba was going to destroy his kingdom. And he dealt with it. He went after it. And he didn't go after it as on his own. He had Joab and all his guys involved in it. But we see all God's intervention here, don't we? We see flesh still at war with what? The spirit. So even in our problem solving, guys, even in dealing with the issues of our lives, we're going to continue to have the flesh battling the spirit. But we can make a choice to allow God's spirit to be more victorious or be victorious over the flesh. And by that, our lives will be set back in order. Our lives will be set back the way God has called us to be. Because now we all know, because we've been in the scripture for some time, David is called to be king, called to be restored back to his kingdom after his son chased him out. And now the restoration process is becoming complete. It's becoming complete again. And David is going to recognize that God was faithful to bring him back to the place he was called, faithful to remove that which was causing division, but even faithful to then restore and build back up, even when we know there's still a Joab running around all loose cannon. And I like that thought because we have to remind ourselves the flesh is always running around like a loose cannon. It always is there. The horrible thing about us here on this earth is we're here on this earth. The flesh is always going to be here, running around like a loose cannon. But that does not mean that God cannot still fulfill his calling on your life. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word, Lord, and we thank you for how it speaks to us. And Lord, we just pray tonight that you would begin still even to continue to restore Lord, the calling you've placed on our lives, the calling just as a Christian, to walk with you, to be at peace, to be at the place where we're resting in you. We pray, Lord, that if there are these things that are causing division, that are causing us to be split, help us to learn to deal with them wisely. Help us to learn through your word and through your words spoken to us how to handle all of these things that we would see ourselves being then brought back to a place of victory. And so, Lord, I just pray for any man in here who's going through that, who's searching out for your wisdom. I pray that you would speak to him, give him direction on how to be victorious. So, Lord, we thank you and ask that you would go before this time of uh, fellowship as we get into the groups and as we begin to just discuss your word, ignite in us a fire, ignite in us a, uh, our ears to hear your spirit. Lord, that we can find victory when we leave here tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you.